When it comes to strength training, you have many options, most notably free weights and machines. In today's episode, we're going to talk about the best machines or, to be more clear, a machine-only workout that you could do for your body utilizing the machines that we deem to be the most effective. I like this. This is um, yeah, different. I mean, well, we all we all we're so negative about them usually. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to be nice on this. Well, I, you know, and I think uh, it's important to explain that, right? Why I think because the benefits of free weights um, are just and and barbell training is just is just far superior than than training on machines, uh, regardless of what you hear on the internet and the arguments that are there. Um, and we've talked about that at, at length in other episodes. But I do think there's time where you're traveling or, hey, I've been training this way for a long time. This is a nice interruption. And so I think the idea of putting together a workout that one of us would do uh, at a gym where we're not going to do any free weights, what would it look like? What machines would we choose? Why might we choose those machines? Yeah. Uh, and, and how would we put together a really good workout? Yeah, if I had to do like a total body type workout, like what would that consist of? Like there's, a, there's definitely a few machines I'd probably – steer towards more so than others. Yeah. Now, ideally, now I know a lot of times that they're, they're, the question is posed as machines versus free weights. And we've had episodes like that, but the truth is a, a good, well-balanced routine, especially one that you follow uh, for years and years and years. And, uh, and hopefully that's the case, right? Hopefully you start a workout routine and, and you never stop. You always follow it. Uh, it, it shouldn't use both, right? Machines and uh, free weights because using them both gives you the best of both um, of both worlds, ideally speaking. But there are times when you might want to just do machines. Uh, they tend to be faster, easier. Uh, big box gyms will typically have these machines that we're going to talk about uh, to be yeah. available. Um, and they're just, they do feel different. They, there are pluses and A little less and damaging, minuses. I would say a little bit. Yeah. So I'm, I've been now using primarily machines for the last maybe six weeks on purpose. Uh, I've never done a machine only work out for any length or period of time. Typically when I do, it's like what you said, Adam, when we're traveling. And um, <clears throat> I'm noticing a few different things. Um, of course, they require less stability and support than free weights do, which means that you're not going to gain the same stability and support uh, type of gains or, or strength that you would get from free weights. However, the other side of that is it's less damaging. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I do a press or a row or whatever with a machine versus a, its free weight counterpart, for the same reps, same intensity, right? Let's say I'm pushing them both really hard. It just damages the body less. Now that allows me the ability to train more often. I'm less likely to overtrain. I can do more sets, add more volume. Um, of course, that means with free weights, I might be able to do less and get the same type of results. But it is, it does cause uh, less damage, and so it feels different on the body. You know, going real hard on a machine overhead press just doesn't hammer you like a barbell overhead press. And there's some value. Sometimes you're tired. Sometimes you're overstressed or sometimes you want to work out longer, which is mm -hmm. what I'm doing right now. I'm going in and I'm trying to get more volume in and I can't get away with that, you know, with free weights. Yeah. I think we've always recognized that there's value, especially too, if you're rehabbing and there's limitations with um, you, your function at the time. So you have to be mindful of uh, certain, um, uh, certain amounts of ranges of motion and, um, you know, your capacity with that, uh, and being supported in positions like in seated yeah. positions. And, um, I think like that's where machines really shine in, in terms of helping you to still express your muscle contraction and get blood flow and, and still kind of, that really does then aid and contribute towards rehabilitation and healing. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, there's benefit with that. And then two, the fatigue point, like you do get fatigued um, with uh, free weights and then it becomes a little bit more uh, risky because if you, yeah. if you can't really brace and really control uh, your body to its full degree, you know, that you kind of leave yourself open for injury sometimes. So I've actually uh, trained for an extended period of time like this for a long time, way too long. Uh, because I came from that camp of uh, like feeling a muscle, right? Yeah. Like that was like the best way to build or work a muscle was like how well could I target it and feel it? And 
you know, there's one of the great things about machines is do a good job of targeting specific muscles. Oh, it's why bodybuilders like machines. It's, right. It's easy to isolate a muscle on a machine because everything's supported. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so I definitely was in that camp for a long time. Now, the reason why I think we probably haven't done this episode uh, and why we talk primarily towards like why everybody should be training and lifting free weights is because like all of us at one point had figured out like – I've seen the difference and it's like a drastic difference of the gains that I got from training free weights in comparison to all the years of training on machines. And so um, I definitely am way more a fan of teaching my clients free weight training, but there are places for training like this. So I'll still interrupt my free weight training with a day like this occasionally. And a lot of that time is, is when I'm either one felt like I've overreached and I've trained too much. And so I'm, I'm kind of sore. And so I want to go in there. I'm not, I'm trying to reduce intensity. Um, or if I've just been consistent with free weight training for a while and I hadn't done that, or if I'm traveling, like those tend to be the reasons why I would interrupt my normal yeah. training cycle now with this. Yeah. I think there's also a lot of value for the advanced lifter because the advanced lifter when you've been practicing uh, with strength training for a long time, you're able to uh, activate more muscle fibers with a set than somebody who doesn't have that same experience. And so using a machine, isolating a muscle group, and then pushing the intensity, you're going to get some good hypertrophy benefits. This is why what you'll notice with high-level bodybuilders is they typically start with free weights. This is where they build the majority of their muscle. And then they start to move more to machines as they become pros and get even bigger and larger. Like you're, you know, if you're a 270 pound bodybuilder, you know, doing a standing barbell overhead press, you're, you're going to exhaust yourself after five sets. And it's going to be tough to finish the rest of your workout versus sitting in a shoulder press machine that puts it's the track is set. You just push, come up. You don't have to stabilize as much and balance as much on the body. It allows you to finish. Um, training the rest of your body. Now, for for someone who's not a pro bodybuilder or whatever who's listening right now, it's great to combine the two. So now you can look at higher volume workouts, lower intensity, higher intensity, and, and you can start to piece these things together. This is why workout programming can sometimes be so complicated because all these factors uh, come into play, like a squat machine versus a barbell squat, same volume, same intensity, same tension, not the same effect on the body different considerations for what exercises you follow up with, how many sets you do, and so on. Like one of the big things I notice with machines is I push the intensity harder mm -hmm. and I feel okay. Like if I go to failure on a machine, it does not feel like going to failure on free weights. And this may be why sometimes we hear in yeah. social media these fitness influencers say you always have to train to failure. I wonder if it's because that's what they train primarily on machines. <laughs> yeah. And they notice that that intensity needs to be could there. could be a factor for sure. It could be. And so, and I'm finding myself pushing that intensity higher uh, with, with machines than I would um, with free weights. But the isolating part is a good one. Like if you sit on a machine and try to isolate your rear delt or try to isolate, a, you know, your triceps or, a, you know, your upper chest or, or you know, mid chest or the mid back, you're not worried about stabilizing, controlling. You're not worried about, you know, having to hold your body in a particular way. You are there. You're set in that position. In fact, when I would train clients, I would often use machines to teach a client to contract the muscle in a particular way, move a particular way, so that later we could we would have some of the strength to then be able to do the free weight version of that particular exercise. Now, you talk about, uh, you know, programming and why it can be very nuanced, right? Um, but there are some rules that still apply, regardless if we're talking about free weights or machines. And one of those would be how you prioritize exercise selection, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, we started off with legs. I do want to explain, though, to the consumer that's or the general population that might follow this is that, you know, we or we prioritize them in big muscle groups, right? So most of your energy goes to like a leg a leg machine. But if you were someone who had a specific body part that you were trying to develop, that would take priority. You would put that first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So just keep but generally speaking, you would start, right. You would start with legs right, and move uh, through to the smaller uh, muscle groups and, and you'll get better results this way. Now this is a full body workout and you could follow this workout two days a week and you could get away with this workout without developing muscle imbalance or anything for a good six weeks or so. And you'll probably get some, some decent results, but you will want to mix this up at least after that period of time, because it's the same, 
exercises over and over. There is no stability component and you may start to develop uh, movement pattern uh, issues. Yeah. Today's giveaway is MAPS Powerlift. To enter to win, leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and then turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comments section. Also, this month's sale, MAPS Anabolic and MAPS Anabolic Advance are both 50% off. If you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Now, the first exercise, we said legs. Uh, and, and this, we, we discussed a little bit about whether or not we would put a leg press here or a hack squat. I right. think those are the two best lower body compound lift exercises that you could do that will produce guys kind of the biggest bang for your buck, yeah. most muscle, most strength, most performance. And I think initially I thought of a uh, leg press because you could really load it substantially, but in, you guys talked me out of it with the range of motion because you true. do get a superior range of motion with a hack squat. So yes. you can express that you know, a little bit more effectively and really get that posterior chain a little bit more. I, I also thought that we, we, you know, we agreed on, on machines that should be in pretty much every gym too. Right. right? Cause there's yeah. examples of like, I mean, I would love a, a belt squat machine right here. Oh yeah. You know? oh, yeah. Yeah. I know. But not, not, not easy to find. No, not easy to find at no. all. I mean, it's, it's rare to see them in a, in a gym. Um, but I mean, it would be awesome, but like a reverse hyper. To, yeah. The me, idea. And really, I think what we thought about was like, man, most everything in here would almost be in a hotel gym. I mean, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. most of these exercises can they're be staple machines. Yeah. They're staple machines in every major commercial gym. And so as the listener that might be go, Oh man, I would do this. You know, yeah. and, Cause you have some really cool yeah. machine at your gym that nobody else has. You know, one thing I want to add before we we continue um in our time of working in gyms which has been a while now i've been in i've been working in gyms for two and a half decades we saw the emergence of plate loaded machines which didn't exist before before machines were selectorized meaning you move the pin and it was a weight stack and then all of a sudden hammer strength they were the first ones yeah to come out with plate loaded hammer strength and they became uh very popular because now you think to yourself, what's the difference if you add a plate to, to a machine versus moving a weight stack? Well, the difference was hammer strength tapped into how tension works throughout the body and it mimicked free weights more than machines. In other words, with a press or a row, what you'll find is one portion of the rep will be easier than another portion of the rep versus m most cable led, you know, selectorized machinery. If you put 75 pounds on the, on the machine, it's 75 pounds from the beginning to end. Whereas with a hammer strength or other plate loaded equipment, now there's lots of plate loaded equipment. What you'll find is it'll be loaded. It'll feel the heaviest at the part you're the strongest and easiest at the part where you tend to be weakest because the the way that they design them with the angles and the leverage, oh, yeah. the free weight will get heaviest or oppose gravity most at the times when they're most opportune. This actually makes plate loaded machines more effective, in my opinion, in many in many uh, in many ways. Um, and we, we, we will talk about one particular plate loaded piece of equipment here, but a hack squat, I, I, you know, we think it's better than a leg press because the range of motion, I mean, do a leg press, see how far you move the platform, do a hack squat, see how more, how far you move the platform. It's yeah. just a greater, fuller range of motion. And it more, it, it's probably has a little bit more carryover into the everyday world because it's mimicking a squat. Whereas a leg press is. You know, I'm I'm on my back pushing yeah. something away from me, which you don't really get too Might much. Might as well be in a recliner. You know, <laughs> yeah, just like throw some weights. Yes. Well, I've seen. I mean, and have you guys are? I've seen. I've seen someone. If you if you can hack squat really good way, you're you're sometimes a, a decent squatter. I mean, yes. there's some carryover yes. into even the barbell squat there. I've seen people that could stack and load the entire leg press that can't squat 225. No. <laughs> so that there, there's because a Because there's no stability in the, the core. Yeah, the, it is just. They're it's, always the biggest peacock guy in the gym. It's that yeah. different. I mean, yeah. it's that different that you could get really strong with the leg press and yet still can't even squat 225 mm -hmm. pounds. You you start pushing three, 400 pounds on a hack squat, uh, you're probably able to squat 225 yeah. barbell back squat. Yeah. So there's a lot more carryover, I think, to it too. So mm -hmm. I think that's just another example of why that, that why we chose a hack squat yeah. over the leg press. Next would be a seated or lying um, hamstring curl. Now here's an exercise you can't really mimic very well yeah. with free weights. Yep. There really isn't a, a leg curl. I mean, I guess you could do like a... Oh, uh, what's a what's a Nordic curl? Yeah. But good oh, luck yeah. doing that. Those are really challenging. Unless you're really strong. Yeah. A lot of skill involved. You can do a physio ball leg curl. 
Yeah. But you're not getting the same yeah, well, and stability. Even, yeah. And both intensive. both those are both those are great movements, right? Not to to knock them, but one of the things that lying leg curls uh, also keeps tension on the muscle the entire yeah. the full range of motion too. Where you lose that with Nordic curls, you you're at yep. the top of the curl. It's mm -hmm. much easier at the very end. It's extremely difficult, and so finding a range where you can actually complete the rep and then actually still get a good workout yeah. all the way through. I'm curious. Are you guys more prone to doing the seated or the lying? I, I personally prefer doing the lying hamstring curls you know what I, I i enjoy both i don't i don't um i like the seated because the seated puts my hamstrings in a more of a stretch position at the end of the motion oh, see i feel more in lying I guess, to stretch. stretch yeah oh interesting yeah. i i don't think it's a big difference yeah, although both not. of them are loading it a little bit differently but the main motion is the, the i think i think this the seated um is easier to have better form. The lying, you people's hips tend to shoot up yeah. mm. and come off of it, mm. and they also tend to move and flex their yeah. their feet and their ankles, and yeah. so it ends up feeling it in their calves, mm. or they uh, let their hips rise off. So it takes a, a little bit better or a little bit more technique to do the mm. lying. I think I feel like the seat is really easy to do, but, but I'm with you. I feel the stretched more in line. I like both. I mean, I, yeah. it, th these are actually movements yeah. that even if I'm training uh, mostly free weights, I still will have this. This is one of the few. Uh, how do you work the leg? So the, the hamstrings, I mean, there's, there's, there's a few heads of it, but one part, the leg bicep, you really only work when you flex the knee, yes. uh, like fully, and you can't do that with free weight. Now, deadlifts, stiff legged deadlifts, Romanian deadlifts. I mean, yeah, you work the whole hamstring, hinge, but yeah, but you're not getting that leg curl. Yeah, right. you know that that leg. Which is bicep. why that still this is one of the few that actually still find its way into my free weight training. Totally, I'm still going to do this exercise. Totally. Next is the cable row, a another exercise that I would say if I was only doing free weights, mm -hmm. I would inject cable rows in there. I like cable rows because. Uh, you can load them. There's still a stability component, but you're not bending over, holding a weight, which requires a lot of stability. Like one of the drawbacks uh, can also make it a plus, but I'll say one of the challenges of like a barbell row is you need to be able to stabilize and yeah. hold yourself yeah, that's that lower back. Yeah, while rowing the weight. Yeah. With a cable row, the positioning, you're not fighting gravity. You're still fighting the weight, but it's e easier to stabilize yourself. Now, what I love cable rows with clients because to yes. get a client to depress, right, bring their shoulder blades down and back to get that nice open chest squeeze back position, teaching them in a bent over position with a barbell row or two dumbbells is so hard. It's like it naturally makes them want to roll their shoulders forward. It's in a valuable seated row, for anybody, yeah. even if they're like a beginner or if they're not a beginner, like just to learn how to combat a lot of the daily habits that we have of reaching for things in front of us, sitting, you know, with our protracted shoulders to be able to get back in good posture and retract the shoulders and keep that chest high, but then also reinforce that by strengthening it. Uh, they feel an immediate difference and in, in, in a good feeling. Of so this is maybe, and I'm trying, I'm like trying to rack my brain right now and go like, is, was there a time that this isn't true? As far as I can remember, this is true. These, the single most used exercise I'd ever done with every single client. I don't think I've ever had a yes. client I did not teach seated room. In fact, this is the first back. This exercise. is the first exercise I would do a lot yeah. of times. Yeah, because it's a just, teaching moment. It's such a teaching moment for. I overall, would do it in my assessment. Yes, yeah. for, over, for overall posture. Even before I go, we, we talk so highly of like things like the barbell back squat. If your if your client doesn't know how to retract and depress their shoulders to even set the bar on their back, yeah, you want to be able. They're to, not going to be able to bench press yeah, well either. No. Yes, so this is such an incredible movement that I, I would say if I had to go back and assess what exercise did I use the most out of all exercise in the gym, I'd probably say the seated cable row. Yep. Like, like there was, I don't care how old you were. I don't care what your goal was. This was a staple movement that I either used to teach and get you going on it, or it was a staple movement in your routine all For the time. For trainers, this is invaluable because what you, what you do is you put your client in position, you have them sit upright, and it's not hard for you, of course, get the permission from the client to place your hands on their shoulders and help them move in position and move and contract and get this nice full squeeze in the mid back, which they probably haven't felt for a long time. Mm -hmm. It's try doing that with free weights. You can, and I've done it, but it's really hard because now you're battling gravity. You're fighting them, trying to round their back, and they have to learn how to Still hip work hinge on and, bracing properly. Yes, and all that yes, stuff. yes, yes. Well, and it, it directly opposes uh, what everybody is almost like. Everybody is challenged with. I don't think I ever trained a client that didn't have some form or another of forward shoulder, you know, forward shoulder yeah. and forward head. And so, 
we just we do everything in front of us that that movement is so important to develop those muscles that bring mm -hmm. the posture into that position that it was a go-to it was a starting for everybody it was a, a staple exercise i kept and so that has to be in this now for, for just pure muscle building also up there this is also a great exercise for just general overall muscle building uh of the back now as far as handles are concerned there's a lot of different handles and people make arguments for each one the the traditional narrow handle i think is probably the easiest yeah for most people to use if you go real wide now you can get more upper back and rear delt and all that stuff but just in general cable row has got to be one of the best ones agreed all right next up is a plate loaded chest press now i wrote plate loaded here instead of machine selectorized because when hammer strength is the first one to really do this but what you'll what you'll notice when you do these is first off, the way the resistance feels as you press the weight up allows the weight to feel heaviest at the end where you're strongest, lightest at the bottom where you're not as strong. So it follows this natural strength curve, which we know through training with bands and chains makes a big difference. Also, hammer strength was the first one that I know of, at least uh, you know in mainstream, to change the angle of the press so that your hands are further apart at the beginning and they slowly they come, come together, together yeah. at the top, yep. which is like, if you are if you understand what the pecs do, they bring the upper arm, the humerus, into center line. So rather than pressing straight out, which a barbell fixes your hands, right? So you still get that motion. But with a, with a plate loaded, because the hands come together, you actually get a greater range of motion. This actually makes it a pretty damn good uh, exercise uh, for the chest. Yeah. Now, did you guys have a favorite as, cause what's kind of cool about these is they have, uh, you know, the upright Up, vertical press, yeah. they have the incline version of it. They even have the flat, at least the, the gym that I was at, they had the, the flat, um, oh, where you lay on your back? Yeah, that's my favorite. Yeah, okay. yeah, I like yeah, the one where you lay on your back. Yeah, if you can get a hold of that one, that's no, my. That's, that's the best. I always see the incline the most. I think, and yeah. that's the one I usually do. That's probably my second favorite, yeah. right? So if I had an old pick, if they if the gym had a lying on your back uh, press, then I would do that. Uh, then the second one would probably be incline. Now here's a here's a you know kind of a side note. I like the sitting up plate loaded chest press. For my elderly clients, my clients with high blood pressure, my clients mm. who had trouble laying mm -hmm. on their back. Mm -hmm. And for trainers watching this, you know, if you're watching this, you're young and work out, you think, what are you, what are you talking <clears> about? <throat> well, you take a client in their 50s who's out of shape or 60s who's out of shape, you have them lay oh. on their back. Ooh, it's Ooh. You, you, some of them they can't come even up touch out their, of it. Sometimes they'll pass out. Yeah. And sometimes they can't even touch their head to the bench because they have such bad yeah. uh, forward head and you'd have to put things underneath their head to do a sitting up chest press made it easier for me to get them in that motion. Of course, the goal was to get them to be able to lay on their back uh, at some point. Yep. All right, next up, <laughs> one exercise on the Smith machine. I, I, I love that you had to put this <laughs> yeah. in here. Oh, I actually you. I went Smith to the machine. bathroom and then somebody yeah. said this hey, if you go, press. If you go back, if you go back far enough uh, on the podcast, you've heard me talk about, especially bodybuilding days, when we would talk about the Smith machine, and I know we would roast it a lot of times. And I agree. I admitted that I, I love. I used to love doing it for uh, shoulder press. Yes. Um, when I, because I didn't need a spotter for it. Right. It's like an exercise that I could really push the weight. Also made it great for strip sets or drop sets, mm -hmm. which I love to use it for too. So I actually really liked the Smith machine for shoulder pressing, which is I believe the original uh, purpose of it. It's been used for. A million different things now because yeah. like everything else in the gym we get creative with it we make up exercises that you can do on it but was that I, the first exercise? i believe that it was yeah it was designed for upper body and i think primarily for shoulders is was wow. what it was originally hmm. for i have to look up yeah. the the creator of it but i remember when i'd see people doing lower body movements on it i'd always comment on like that's not the the the, the intent the, the creator of it did not intend it to be for lower body exercises. Now, do you do it with the back supported uh, incline where you bring it all the way to vertical when you're pressing? Yeah, so I'll, I'll have like a, well, I mean, I actually like just slight, a slight, 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 just a slight, yeah, slight, slight incline. So it's way, way higher than a chest incline, but it's not quite fully it's 90 degrees. It's not fully upright. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and then, then I can get, that way I can bring the bar all the way, right all the way down to my collar. This is bar. why I like the Smith yeah. machine seated press. It's most bodies can do it. Whereas machines, sometimes if you're too tall, too short, doesn't work. And it's a barbell, so you can move your hands in and out, again, fitting most people. And it's a nice full range of motion, overhead press. In fact, uh, the Smith Machine seated press was how sometimes I would teach a client to be able to get full extension. 
if I put them in a seat that supported their back and then had them press up. And so this happens too with a lot of clients. They don't get, they can't get that full extension. Yeah. They can't get it all the way up. Then what I would do is I place my hands on the barbell. I'd press it up for them and pull their hands up. And then I'd see if I could let go and create a nice isometric contraction. On the I, top. I remember clients like that. And it, it was always a, a tell for me when I would see them go to press and they would lift their heel. Yes, and you, and you realize that like that's just a natural inclination is to get higher up. Yeah. So your body just kind of comes yeah. up. With Isn't the that funny? Too. Yeah. By the way, some Smith machines, I'd say I'd say a good percentage of them now don't just move the bar straight up and down. What you'll notice is there's a slight angle to the to the to the barbell. This is actually beneficial when you're doing an overhead press. When you press up with the barbell, you bring the weight up, and then you kind of bring it back over your head for a nice straight position. With a Smith machine that goes straight up and down, if it goes in front of you, it stays in front of you. Some of them, many of them now, actually have an angle to where it actually ends up directly above your head when you press it up. Oh, wow. So if you have the option, get the one that has a slight angle. Most people don't even notice, uh, but that would be the one that I would Yeah, do. again, though, this is, I mean, the idea of picking the Smith machine was knowing that every gym has, even your yeah, hotels yeah, yeah. have a Smith machine Pretty on there. Accessible. Because, I mean, you can make the case for like a Viking press, I think is one of our favorite. Yeah, I uh, wish you could but I I mean, find that But I mean, again, anywhere. you don't you don't see. So there, I know, again, there's going to be people that hear this and be like, oh, man, <laughs> nice. this shoulder. I will get, put an honorable mention. Uh, if you're learning to do an upright row for your shoulders, Smith machine's a great way to learn it uh, because you're, it's on a track. And some people have a lot of trouble trying to figure out where to place their elbows and do an upright row. Uh, Smith Machine makes it a lot easier, uh, although the free weight version is, I think, uh, superior. Yeah. Next up for triceps, this is much more common nowadays. In fact, I rarely ever see a, 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 a normal gym that doesn't have this machine. In the past, it was actually quite rare. In fact, when I was a kid, if I saw one of these, I'd run to it. Uh, it's a dip machine. You actually see these quite a bit now where you sit in the chair you grab the handles behind you and you push them down. Yeah, I like they, it. And they usually have like the plate loaded ones where it gives you that support. On yeah. The way you put your knees on it. What do they call that? Oh, like you're talking about, or, oh, you're talking about the Gravitron. Gravitron. Yeah, or yeah, the yeah. knee supported yeah, one. Yeah. So, that, I mean, yeah, I mean, just because honestly, like it dips, it seems like it's a very simple exercise. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have a hard time with the strength involved in a dip. And so if that's your issue and you know, a lot of our alternatives is like, like, taking a, a rubber band and kind of helping aid in that support. Mm -hmm. But, you know, a good machine uh, they have for that is is pretty helpful. Yeah, yeah in the, fact, I would say that's the best version of the dip they machine. They have that a lot, too. That's a com that's a pretty common, like, different versions of that. But basically the the, the, the Gravitron or whatever yeah. that supports the knees when you do that. That's but, the brand name, by the but way. This Gravitron is a, was is an it, actual it, machine. Is it? Yeah. yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I, I know there's a bunch of different ones that they... It's they, the one you put Just your, don't do the, <laughs> the leg extension version of that. Turn that into I, a influencer. Glute exercise. I mean, part of why... It, it, it it's up there for us too is is it's it's a it's like a compound movement for your triceps right yes. so yep. it's such a great a such a such a great movement and why would we not do kickbacks or overhead extensions or push downs like those are all isolation movements and you get so much more growth and and gains from doing dips Plus you get good range of motion in the shoulders yeah you get some nice functional development uh in, in dips in general are one of the best movements you could do for the upper body. Yeah. And most people can't, or I'd say many people can't do a good full body, you know, full I, I body could, weight dip. When I when I first yeah. started lifting, I, I, I'll never forget the first day getting our gym membership and my buddy took me over to a dip bar and I couldn't even do a single one dip. Mm. I couldn't do, I couldn't, didn't have enough upper body strength to, to do it. And so avoided it for a really long time. It wasn't until coming back to it later on and realizing how much benefits come with the dip. Yeah. All right, next up would be a bicep exercise. And this has got to be the easiest machine to find in any gym because I think any <laughs> gym will have it. It's a preacher very, very curl. popular. A preacher curl machine uh, for the biceps. Now, preacher curl because I think it's easy to set you in position, lock your elbows in place, work the biceps. I will say this. Every machine, by the way, has a a, a axis of rotation or a, po a, a joint in the machine that you want to line your joint up with to make sure you're in the right position because your arms may be longer or shorter. Um, and if you want, if you don't line up your elbow with, with the joint of the machine, then you'll find your wrist and hand doing weird things as you're trying to, to curl the weight up. I, a preacher machine is actually another one of those exercises that even as I moved away from a lot of machine training, it still found its way regularly yeah. in my routine, just because even though you can do a free weight uh, preacher curl, 
uh, the tension is different. Yeah. Uh, when you're on the machine, you've got you got full tension the entire range of motion through the movement. Where when you're doing dumbbells, you get that great dumbbell stretched position. But then yeah. when you get to the top of the preacher curl, I mean, you can sit there all day and and hold that in that position. Where when you're in the machine, you've got that tension still there. You can you're in a flex position. Totally. So one of my favorite uh, exercises totally. to do. Now you'll notice we didn't put calf machines here because most people use calf machines anyway when they work calves. And core, because I don't know about you guys, but have you guys ever used a good core machine? <laughs> it's always contrived. It's always hip it's flexor. Very, yeah. There's, I've never found it a good- doesn't set you up for success. No. You know, I, I find- I mean, cables you could use. Not only chop. that, but I also yeah, feel like your core, maybe. because your 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 core muscles, the primary is to, to stabilize, right? The spine and support your posture. It's such an important thing to learn how to do just your body. Like yeah. to be able to do that, like to, to fit in a machine just to, to build abs. So my abs look good is one thing, but it's that, that your core muscle is so functional. So learning to train it through functional movements of just mm -hmm. your, I think is superior anyway. So even if I was trying to, I mean, and you don't need anything, you could do it. You could do reverse curls laying on the ground or full ever sit ups yeah, or crunches. Just, they have yet to use, invent a machine that really, no, in fact, I've used core machines and I can make them work my core well because I know how to make my core do the work. I have never seen anybody no. go in one of those and and do it and not turn into a massive hip flexor yeah. exercise. You know, mm. so they feel it once the hip flexors are fatigued. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and their abs feel tired from yeah. stabilizing, but that's it. Yeah. All right, so sets and reps, you can do because these are machines. You can go up to four or five sets of each of these exercises, and you want to keep your reps in that eight to twelve rep range. Although Cycling through lower and higher reps is probably a good idea, especially if you follow a routine like this uh, for longer than just a few weeks. That being said, the way I use it is is the way you just prescribed it, though, which is I'm gonna I'm normally gonna do about four sets of this, and yep. I, I'm gonna stay somewhere between ten and fifteen reps. Hundred percent. I mean, I'm, I'm the I'm, really low rep for machines. Yeah, and it's not that you can't do it, and it doesn't have video. There's plenty of science to support. There's benefits <laughs> to that. It's just use it for that for this application. The way we've explained how we all integrate and use machines. This is like a day where I'm going in there and I'm doing 10 to 15 rep range and I'm going to do probably four to five sets of each one of these exercises. Excellent. Look, if you're a hard gainer, if you have trouble building muscle, gaining weight, go to mindpumpfree.com. Check out our hard gainer guide. It's totally free. You can also find all of us on social media. Justin is at on Instagram at mindpumpjustin. I'm on Instagram at mindpumpdestefano and Adam is on Instagram at mindpumpadam. Adam. 